Good day guys, so we're back again and uh, today we're discussing return activated sludge. My name is TP Famesi and I'll be taking you through this channel whereby we'll dis be discussing various uh, water treatment methods okay, under our water treatment technology basically. So, uh, and our topic today which is uh, return activated sludge, uh, it's basically a cycle whereby we'll also be discussing sedimentation as well as uh, oration basically the introduction of, of oxygen but we'll go through that so firstly uh, we'll be going through sedimentation we'll first go through sedimentation and basically sedimentation is um, separation of your liquid and your uh, suspended solids or for instance those settled solids as well so it's not as easy as we put it uh, in terms of just the separation of the two. There are various uh, factors that influence those flocks or sedi um, solids that are in suspension from actually settling. Uh, talking about those various uh, factors, some of them would include, for instance, the size of the flock and the shape of the flock. Look, um, in order to form the flock, basically, those suspended solids come together. And by them coming together, basically, they're going to change the size. By changing size, um, you'll be changing the mass initially of the actual flock. And by so doing, the density is also going to change. Bearing in mind, in order to get our density in terms of its unit, it's actually meter cubes per kilograms. So, so the other way around, kilograms per meter cubes. So basically, that influences your mass as well as your volume so that changes and by changing the mass be, by the mass becoming bigger the density changes and by the flock having a bigger density than the water that means that it's going to settle and another thing uh, that's also a factor is that viscosity of the liquid a nice example that I, I like to make is for instance if ever you have to pump two types of liquids let us say water and oil inside a pipe one in each uh in their own pipes which one would get to its destination first and basically it would be water because water has got a lower uh, viscosity what is viscosity viscosity is basically the ability of water to resist not water any liquid for that matter to resist flow and therefore oil for instance would have a higher uh, viscosity same then goes with water after it has been mixed with other uh, substances it might have a uh, higher viscosity as well another factor for instance that will influence sedimentation of your flock would be the retention time we'll also do a, a quick calculation of it as well as well as uh, the upward flow rate um, of your sedimentation and also the area of the surface area of the sedimentation tank a uh, simple example of this will have surface area a of your sedimentation tank and we'll have surface area b surface area a as you can see it's quite small b is big okay so um how does it really affect it let us say we've got our flock uh on our surface of the water in our sedimentation tanks and there comes in our inlet okay and our water basically uh, is poured into the sedimentation tank same goes with a okay so a perfect example of this is when pouring um water with the jug into let, let us say a bucket for instance you will normally get turbulences the water is agitated so same then goes with the sedimentation tank after that water is poured basically uh there will be some waves or turbulences which will also affect those flocks and if those flocks are agitated they won't be able to settle so over here since it's a bigger surface area when the water enters into the sedimentation tank those waves will then die off before getting right through to the walls of the sedimentation tank meaning that the um, far off um, flocks will be able to settle without being affected by that and also that um, when it comes to the surface area and basically being affected by the size of the tank, 
the design also of the cementation tank plays a vital role for instance uh if you have what's called a a what's the word that one cementation tank and you have installed a stealing box in it yeah it will quickly uh basically um let those waves die off before getting to the rest of the water so that's just a couple of the factors which influence uh, sedimentation of your flock in a nutshell okay guys now let us look at calculations that will cover our rotation time as well as uh, upward flow um, upward flow basically of our sedimentation so starting off with our rotation um, let's have an example let us say we are given a daily flow a flow of let's say 9,000 meter tubes per day okay and let us say we are given a volume of basically the volume of the sedimentation tank let us say it's about 800 800 meter cube and the surface area of it is mm, surface area let's say it's 200 200 uh, meter squared okay. so now we'll be looking at the retention time first and foremost so that is the given information uh, whereby you're told that the daily flow uh, coming into your sedimentation tank is 9000 meter cube and the volume of the actual tank is 800 meter cubed and the surface area of the tank is then 200 meter squared so in order to calculate um, the retention time i just normally remind myself by doing this triangle and saying v is 2t multiplied by q so we are now looking for that time which is retention time and that will equal to our volume divided by our flow, which is quite easy. Our volume is 800 meter uh, cube divided by our flow is 9. Uh, sorry, it's the other way around. Uh, the flow is the other way around. Basically, yeah, it's a volume over flow, which is our volume uh, is. I was, actually, I was actually quite great. It's 800 meter cube divided by our uh, flow, which is 9,000 9, meter squared per day. So those will cancel out and you will be left with a day. And let's see how much we actually get. Whereby we have. 800 divided by 9,000 and it comes to 0 0.089 day so less than a day basically yeah and then now when we have to calculate um, our upward flow rate we have a formula our formula says that upward flow rate is equal to our um, flow daily flow divided by our area which is our daily flow is 9000 one two three uh meter cubed per day divided by our area which is 200 meter squared uh let's do another quick calculation over there to see how much we actually have three divided by 200 and that comes to 45 meter cubed per meter squared per day okay. um most books for instance leave uh this unit as it is just so that you can see its upward flow rate and for instance if those cancel out it will just look like simple um velocity okay, whereby it's meter per day but uh, in order to especially identify it, what it is, they just leave it as meter cubed per day, meter cubed per meter squared per day, simple like that.
All right, guys. So now we'll all we'll be going through the activated slash process. Uh, for instance, it starts directly after the sedimentation tank. And in the sedimentation tank, we normally have our sludge arrive at the bottom. So a portion of that sludge basically is disposed, okay? And another portion then is pumped back into the system again. And the reason for that, um, there are several benefits. Some of the benefits basically, when it mixes now with the raw incoming wastewater, for instance, the activated sludge um, process, is basically um, more advantageous to wastewater which we just forgot to mention in the beginning but uh, it's normally used for wastewater treatment plants because it, you receive a lot of sludge so you are using that sludge again to treat the raw incoming wastewater so uh, another advantage of uh, using this activated um, sludge uh, return activated sludge basically is to remove phosphates ammonia as well as carbon dioxide and nitrates uh, in, in that manner and it also helps basically uh, to form biological flock and when you're having that it is easier for the actual flock to settle where by the time it gets to the sedimentation tank so for instance uh, your sludge will then be pumped back um, into the system whereby it mixes with the raw incoming wastewater and this will be your oration basin and basically the two will mix up uh, in the oration basin and then it will be called MLSS which is called mixed liquor suspended solids and that's where then you get your or in, inside your oration basin and there are different uh, types of oration basins uh, there's compressed air which blows compressed air from the bottom uh, there's a brush orator which just agitates the water when it is pumped through uh, those brushes and also there is vertical uh, orator basically uses a propeller in order to agitate that water once that water is agitated basically it's able to absorb oxygen and the main main purpose of having your return activated sludge is also to introduce more oxygen into your water well, especially wastewater because wastewater comes from um, different industries domestic and more especially with your industries, for instance, um, a lot of chemicals are used in the industrial setup. So you actually need uh, activated uh, sludge in order to introduce more oxygen because those um, that wastewater that you get from industries uh, contains a lot of chemicals. And there is a term known as COD, chemical oxygen demand, meaning that those chemicals that are being disposed will use up oxygen that is inside the water and the water will turn septic so those are also called your anaerobic conditions so by doing all of this which is your activated sludge uh, you're trying to reverse that and have uh, aerobic conditions uh, whereby you have a lot of oxygen uh, being absorbed inside your water in order to avoid the water being septic because once it becomes septic uh, there will also be odor uh, inside your plant and basically at the end this wastewater is going to land up in a river so that will end up killing your aquatic life which is you do not need that uh, type of situation so basically uh, that sums up our um, activated uh, sludge return activated sludge whereby we've discussed our sedimentation we've uh, also gone through some of the calculations involved and also spoken a bit on our oration and the importance of uh, having an oration basin in such a setup for instance okay so thanks for watching and also don't forget to like the video and also subscribe to the channel